In 2012, two families left the city. They left most of their worldly possessions behind along with the conveniences of modern American living. It's today that these two families have relocated themselves in the mountains of the American Ozarks to build for themselves a more sustainable and fulfilling lifestyle. We are an American homestead! This week on An American Homestead, it's time to harvest potatoes. We take a look at our potato box and cages and see how well they did. And then we give a review on our aquaponic system and see how it all works. Thanks for watching and be sure to visit us online at anamericanhomestead.com. So what we're going to do today is uncover our potatoes and see what we got. Uh, we've been working all day out in the garden and canning and doing a bunch of stuff uh, with the produce we've been getting from the garden. And a bunch of our potato plants are dying and it's basically time to harvest. So we're going to pull back what we've got here and see what's all inside our potato patches. Now these two are just wire cages I put and I piled dirt up on the potato plants. And this one here was the one, uh, the slats that I put up were cedar slats from cedar trees that I had put up over the potatoes. Um, and just put, continue to put pile soil on top of them over and over again throughout the season. Uh, I found a few potatoes already, so we're going to uncover this completely and see how much yield we got. I planted about seven, eight pounds of potatoes inside uh, these patches here, and so we'll see what the yield is. Okay, so there's our first haul out of the first cage. These are the potatoes we got out of the first cage. Pretty good. Pretty satisfied with that. There's a lot of little ones that didn't get to maturity, I guess. But uh, some definite big ones like that. That looks great. That one looks good too. So doing pretty good on potatoes for the first cage. Let's go to the second cage and see what we got. So we're going to dig through this and see what we can find. Let's just take a look real quick while I'm digging here. Well, there's a little baby one. Let's, oh, there we go. Look at that. There you go, our first potato out of the potato box. Let's see how many we can pull out of here. Okay, we dug down to the bottom of this potato box, and there's what we got. So pretty good haul uh, for the three potato towers. Uh, two cages and this box that we constructed and we dug down as deep as we could go to when we turned it all over and we'll add the soil back uh, after we're done we're going to use this next year after we add some more nutrients and manures to it uh, but this was a good soil this was made up of uh, mushroom compost and some other things that we had put in here some rock dust and some worm castings and some other things okay so the final numbers are 34 pounds 10 ounces so basically 35 pounds uh, out of about seven or eight pounds, their estimates of what I put in the ground. So I planted about seven or eight pounds of potatoes and got a yield of about 35 pounds. So that's not bad. I mean, for our first year, first time, we're going to go, like I said, we're going to triple or quadruple the, the potato box next time and we'll see what we can do next year. When we decided to leave the city, I was bound and determined to try to build an aquaponic system. I was researching this and uh, thought it was a great idea and there was a lot of people having a lot of great success with aquaponics. And um, I uh, basically put together, after doing a lot of study and research, what I was going to do uh, for aquaponics and I published that online. And uh, somebody saw that, a guy by the name of Travis Huey and said, you know, you have a good idea, but let me share with you some ideas that I think would work better for you. And so he uh, showed me what's called the barrel ponic system, and something he invented back in 2002 and has been doing ever since, you know, for other people and other organizations and, and uh, individuals 
and uh, he came out and actually shared with me you know how he would build the barrel ponic system for us and I wanted to have a big system I wanted to have a system that would produce well for us and produce food I just think it's a great way to be able to produce protein being fish and plants uh, some vegetables produce uh, at the same time and being able to recycle the water uh, all the while growing uh, those those products and so uh, I was bound to determine to do this and he gave us a great head start uh, on the technology of barrel ponics being aquaponics and producing uh, uh, what we have here today you can check out his website at fastonline.org fastonline.org you get all kinds of great free information on how to build a barrel ponic system yourself he provides that information to you for free and then also he provides a retail option at myaquafarm.com there's the logo right there you can check that out myaquafarm.com he's one of our advertisers for our website and so Travis has just given uh, the public a, a vast array of information when it comes to aquaponics and gives gives you the option in a number of different formats to build something on your own or order something on your own and have a way to grow fish and produce how aquaponics works is pretty simple and there are a variety of ways that you can make it work. A quick look online will show you all kinds of systems ranging from small backyard setups in a five gallon bucket to enormous commercial systems that produce enough vegetables to feed a small town. Our system is pretty basic but still very effective. Aquaponics works by having a fish tank. To put it plainly, the fish pee and poop in the water and that waste filled water is then pumped out and up to a waiting flood tank. Once that flood tank fills to a certain level, a valve opens up and the water flows below to the grow beds. The grow beds are filled with rocks. Natural bacteria in the rock-filled grow beds begin to break down the fish waste and turn that waste into nitrates, and the plants use that as food. The clean water is then returned back to the fish tank. So how our system is working is that we have fish tanks that are buried into the ground. We have a big trench that was dug. So if you follow me, I'll show you what exactly we have built. What we have are four sets of grow beds. And so each one of these grow beds is hooked up to a flood tank behind me that you see. And these flood tanks fill up constantly all the time and then are drained into the grow beds. And so the grow beds are constantly being uh, filled with the, the poopy fish water that the, poop are, that the fish are leaving behind. And that's the nutrients that the plants are using to grow. And so each one of these flood tanks fills up every 50, 45, or 50 minutes or so. Uh, these flood tanks fill up and then drain into the grow beds. And then the plants take the nutrients out of the water and then they, they leave the good water behind and it flows back down through a gutter system back into the fish tank. And so the fish are constantly being replenished with clean water. The, the, the poopy water is being taken out of the fish tanks and then being replaced with clean water where the nutrients have been removed by the plants. And that's how aquaponics works. So just to give you an explanation, for this particular grow bed and for all the grow beds, the water level comes up to this equalization bar, okay? And then it begins to equalize throughout the system. At the same time, the grow bed itself is always draining water from the very bottom of the grow bed, okay? And so while this is being equalized, it's always draining right down here at the bottom. Okay, so let's talk about pest pressures. There are a number of pest pressures that I've experienced so far in running this aquaponics system. The biggest pest so far has been the wood rat that got in uh, about a month ago and was just chewing down all kinds of my plants. And we finally used a, what's called a 110 kind of bear trap to trap that wood rat. I, I thought it was a rabbit at first that was getting into the, to the, to the greenhouse, but it was actually what's called a wood rat, almost like a pack rat, same type, type of animal. Had a furry tail and furry ears, um, looked almost like a chinchilla. And so we got that wood rat, and that, that was my biggest pest pressure so far. We do have aphids every so often that come in here. We haven't had a big aphid problem this year, mostly because we have a ton of, it seems like to me that this is what's keeping aphids away, and I may be wrong, but we have a, a very large number of granddaddy long legs, daddy long legs, who, who are living in here. If you get a, take a look at this right up here by the window. See all these daddy long legs right there? 
they're just everywhere all over the greenhouse and they crawl all over the plants and it seems like they're keeping our aphid problem at bay when I was I had I was growing lettuce inside the greenhouse earlier this spring on, on some gutters on some guttering systems and the, the grand daddy long legs the daddy long legs were just covering uh, the lettuce heads there were no aphid problems whatsoever no pest pressures whatsoever, but the granddaddy long legs were everywhere over this lettuce and, I, and they're all over these plants on the grow beds as well. And so I think they're maybe keeping our pest pressures to a minimum. The other pest pressures we've had are like some worms, caterpillar worms, moth worms, things like that. I'm having to pick those individually off of the cabbage heads that we're growing here, the new cabbage heads for the fall, and I'm just feeding those worms to the fish. The fish love them, and so any pest I can pick off the plants individually, I, I throw, the, throw to the fish. That's really the only pest pressures we've had um, uh, inside the greenhouse, and uh, you can't use any chemicals, you can't use any type of sprays because that can all be harmful to the fish. And really that keeps the aquaponics system 100% natural, 100% organic, because you can't use chemicals on this system because the minute you start using chemicals it's either going to have a microbial and antimicrobial effect which is going to kill the growth medium because the plants rely on those microbes inside the inside the gravel to continue to feed the plants and so if you use something that's going to kill the bacteria well there goes your plants if you use something that's that's uh, going to be harmful to the fish well there goes your fish and so you have to keep it 100 percent natural 100 percent organic and if you do so, you allow nature to take its course and allow the pest predators to come in here. Uh, the pest will be kept to a minimum and you can just go through and do manual control all over your grow beds. And so that's what we've been doing so far. It's worked pretty good, except for the wood rat. I had to kill him. Uh, he was very devastating, you know, this spring on getting started. Uh, but we're trying to, we've gotten a cat since that time and hopefully the cat will grow up. It's a kitten now, but the cat will grow up and try to protect the greenhouse. And so far, she, you know, she's already started doing patrols around the garden. She knows where she's supposed to be, and so hopefully we won't have that problem ever again. Aquaponics was something we really wanted to do here on the homestead. Uh, we think that our aquaponics system is probably one of the largest off-grid aquaponics systems that's residential in the world. And so I don't know for sure if that's the case, but for being off-grid and providing our own energy to run it, we think that ours may be one of the largest residential off-grid systems in the world. And so we've seen the benefit that other people, commercial systems and residential systems, have provided for food production, and we wanted to do that here. And so we have very high hopes for our aquaponics system in the months and years ahead. I'm here to learn about canning. I've never done it before. I'm from England and this is all new to me so I'm learning some tips from Jamie and how to do this canning to next year hopefully do some of my own garden produce. At the moment this year my garden's so small it's, I'm just eating it but next year I hope to do some canning and saving my food so yeah. that's what I'm here for. Looks like fun? Yeah, yeah. I love being outside and in the weather and whatever's going on I, I just love being outside. So. Even though it's hot and smoky, it's still fun. Very cool. <laughs> no, that's good.